Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today we are gonna be doing a postpartum freezer meal prep. And this is probably gonna take a lot of the day, so I'm kind of gearing up here. I already have the bacon sizzling and things are starting. I'm about 34 weeks pregnant, so not long until the arrival of our first child here. And I wanna have some freezer meals on hand to help make things a lot easier during the postpartum phase. So if you guys are ready, let's get started because like I said, there are a lot of meals that I want to get prepped today. Okay, so I have a bunch of the other ingredients I'm gonna use to make these breakfast sandwiches already sitting out. I have some English muffins, some bagel thins, some cheese, even more bacon. But for now, I'm gonna start getting the eggs cracked and getting those cooked in the oven while I continue to cook all of the bacon. My favorite thing about making freezer breakfast sandwiches is you can completely make these whatever you want them to be. So I'm obviously using whole eggs here. You can use just egg whites if you want. You saw that I had some little chicken sausage patties. I have bacon. I actually meant to purchase turkey bacon, but I did an order pickup and clearly ordered regular bacon and just <laughs> made that mistake but that's fine too so you can do no meat or anything else you can also mix up the different cheeses that you want you can feel free to chop up some veggies and put those in your eggs before you put them in the oven like i said i have english muffins and bagel thins you can mix up the bread it's completely what you want so these things are very versatile i'm using donut trays especially because I have some bagel thins and just filling them most of the way up. Some of them I'm filling up a little bit further so that hole fills in more and puffs up and those ones I will put on the English muffins and the ones that keep the whole shape a little bit more I'll put on the bagel thins. So I'm grabbing some parchment paper and going to wrap them in parchment paper. That's one way to do it. You can also use saran wrap or tin foil but today I'm going to use parchment paper. Just kind of fold up my cheese a little bit on each piece of bread and add some meat and I'm going to mix up the way that I'm doing it. So I'm going to do some with cheddar cheese and the chicken sausage patties and some with the pepper jack cheese and bacon and kind of mix up the combos so it's different every time. But you'll see I do fold the edges of the cheese a little bit because I don't want it to melt too much off of the sandwich once I reheat it. So I'm just rolling them up into the parchment paper and making these little wraps around each of the sandwiches to prevent as much freezer burn as possible. And then I'll put them all inside of a freezer safe Ziploc bag after that. But for reheating, what I usually do is stick them in the microwave first, sometimes up to like a minute, a minute and a half and then pop them in the toaster to finish them off and get them nice and toasty. So you can skip the toaster step, but I definitely wouldn't skip the microwave step because if you go straight to the toaster, the egg part in the middle is usually not all the way thawed out and you have warm edges of your sandwich and a very cold inside. So make sure to microwave them first. The cooking of the eggs also really depends on the size of your trays that you're using, whether you're using donut trays like I am or muffin tins and just how much egg you put in there. So I put it at 350 and just kind of monitor it. It usually takes 10 or so minutes for the eggs to cook and you can tell when they're cooked all the way through and there's nothing runny. I separated them into two different bags, one for chicken sausage and one for bacon, and made sure to label them with what they are and the date. She 
Okay, so for this next recipe, I'm gonna make chunky monkey pancakes. They're gonna be a little bit of an indulgence, but I'm gonna try using some whole wheat flour. It's gonna be chocolate chips in there, bananas, and you can add nuts if you want. So I'm gonna start with the dry ingredients. And I'm just doing a double recipe of this. So I'm gonna do two cups of flour to start. And for the rest of my dry ingredients, you're gonna do four teaspoons of baking powder if you're doubling it again, two teaspoons of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt. So to that mixture, I'm adding a cup and a half of milk six tablespoons of melted butter. So I'm gonna pop that in the microwave, get that melting, and then four eggs. Does she think about me every now and then? Now and then. Maybe she was right, we couldn't just be friends. It's been hard for me, so hard to understand. Understand. I'm also adding in two tablespoons of sugar and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then I'm going to chop up two cups of banana, followed by just over a cup of chocolate chips. I'm always one step behind, wishing I could read your mind, but I'm ready. Yeah, never ready. I wish I could have made it stop. The first time that Pancakes are always another really good one to freeze ahead of time as well. I thought about making some waffles too, so that might be something else that I do before baby arrives. But having these breakfasts on hand will be great for in the morning, especially when I'm just overwhelmed and I get really hungry the first thing when I wake up. And if I'm going to have a breakfast like this, it usually keeps me pretty full for a while. Now, I've heard if I end up breastfeeding that a lot of times you need more calories when you're breastfeeding and you just get really hungry so maybe it won't last quite as long as it usually does but having a nice hearty breakfast typically keeps me pretty full and like I said I wake up really hungry so it's nice to have this right away. These pancakes aren't necessarily healthier pancakes, especially because they have chocolate chips in them. So even if I don't end up eating them for breakfast, they could make a great snack throughout the day. I might even have them for lunch. There are no limits to, for me when it comes to breakfast foods for other times of the day. lunch and dinner foods we're gonna make instant pot butter chicken and I'm gonna use my super cubes to freeze this so my plan is to do like a layer of rice at the bottom then the butter chicken on top and freeze it in individual portions so I have my instant pot on saute already I cubed up some chicken thighs it should be about a pound maybe a little bit more 
And I'm gonna salt that. Add in a quarter cup of ghee to the bottom. And then you can do anywhere between four and six cloves of garlic in your Instant Pot, as well as a tablespoon of ginger. Okay, now I'm adding in a teaspoon of salt a tablespoon of graham marsala, and two teaspoons of curry. I'm gonna mix that real quick. And then I'm also gonna throw in two teaspoons of paprika. I'm just adding in a can of crushed tomatoes. It's 28 ounces. So add that in and then stir that nice and good so the spices don't burn at the bottom. I'm gonna toss in the chicken thighs that are cut into small pieces and then put the Instant Pot on a five minute high pressure setting and let cook. If I could make most, if not all of these meals in my super cubes, I would. And these are the containers that I'm using just to put the rice at the bottom and then the chicken on top. But the downside of making all of these meals in one day back to back is that I don't have enough super cubes to do that. And they won't freeze fast enough to pop them out of there, but I love them so much. So you don't have a giant casserole dish that goes unfinished. You can thaw out one portion at a time, two, three, four, for however many people you have, and you can just take out exactly what you need. I think this is sauteed enough. It's nice and thick. I'm just gonna spoon it over my little cups full of chicken and rice here, and then we'll freeze it that way. I did add in half a cup of um, either whole milk, heavy cream, or full fat coconut milk works great. The next recipe I'm gonna make is a skillet chili mac. So it's like a mac and cheese, but in a skillet with things that make it kind of like a chili. So I have kidney beans and things like that, tomatoes. So I already have the water boiling for the pasta. And then I'm just gonna to get to chopping my vegetables and showing you all the things that you can dump in there. Pastas are a really easy dish to freeze ahead of time. So this is actually a new recipe, but I am excited to give it a try and hopefully it works. Even if this pasta dish isn't something in particular that sounds good to you, most pasta dishes are great options for freezer meals as well. I've done some freezer mac and cheese recipes, any kind of pasta casserole type thing. And since this is a combo between a pasta and a soup, very prime for freezing. And as an update, Jim and I did try some of this recipe as well. I saved a little portion and didn't freeze it and we had it for dinner this night and it was a hit. Don't worry, I would have removed it if we both didn't like it. Oh, the night
So I've added one medium stalk of celery. I did two green bell peppers. I also added in, that's way too much salt. Um, I also added in one medium onion diced up, then three tablespoons of chili powder, half a teaspoon of salt, and then I'm going to mix this up, add in three or four cloves of garlic, and then a pound of ground beef. Once everything's no longer pink, I'm gonna add in 14 and a half ounces of beef broth and 28 ounces of diced tomatoes in a can with all the juices and everything. And then I'm going to bring this to a boil. Now that the pasta is cooked and drained, I added that in there. And then I drained a can of kidney beans. I'm gonna toss those in. And then I'm gonna fold in half a cup of Greek yogurt and about a cup of cheddar cheese. And then it is done. And I'm gonna put it into a serving dish to go straight ahead and freeze. And then I can just reheat it from there. Kept me far away from my focus and to my heart I cannot lie. I did get some smaller tinfoil containers as well to use in the freezer since I didn't have enough super cubes to use and again didn't have enough time to freeze them enough to pop them out of the super cubes. So this size is a great option as well. Probably one of these things can satisfy both Jim and I for a meal and it's not going to have any leftovers. to breathe dreams of green and filled with this life is so much more than this so where do you go when nothing's like now i'm gonna make some instant pot jambalaya it has shrimp and sausage and chicken in it and of course rice to make that delicious jambalaya and it's a great meal that you can have right away or a really easy one to freeze and it should last for about three months in the freezer so let's make that one now I made this recipe for the first time a couple of months ago and it was a huge hit. It's full of flavors. Jim really likes that it's full of different types of proteins and I love that it has some veggies in it and it's really hearty, nice and filling. The recipe actually included some instructions on how to freeze it so it's great as a freezer friendly meal option as well.
So I've done a pound of andouille sausage. I'm doing a pound of shrimp and it's actually looking like it's pinked up just on the saute function of the Instant Pot. So I'm gonna pull that out and put it on the plate with the sausage. There you go, just got all that out. And then I chopped up one bell pepper that was red, one green bell pepper, and then one onion. So I'm gonna add that back into the Instant Pot, saute that for like five minutes, and then I'm gonna add in some spices and garlic after this is sauteed for five minutes. Okay, this seems cooked enough. Sorry if there's a ton of steam coming off of here. But I'm gonna actually turn off the Instant Pot, add in the spices. So I'm gonna do a bay leaf. I'm doing a teaspoon of salt. A teaspoon of oregano. And then a half teaspoon of thyme and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So this just needs to cook for like 30 seconds or so, not long at all. And that's why I just went ahead and turned it off. And then I'm gonna add in about a half cup of chicken stock. And I'm going to try and get all the burn bits off of the bottom. So when we turn it to the actual instant pot mode, nothing gets stuck there. So I'm gonna scrape that. And you wanna get to um, 14 and a half ounces. If you have a can of chicken stock, that's a lot easier. But I'm just measuring that out. So I'm gonna put in the rest of it now. Mix that up. And then you're gonna do one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. And I also am gonna to toss in a few cloves of garlic. I probably should have done this a couple steps earlier, but forgot about that. So I'm gonna stick three of these cubes in there if I can get them out. And then I'm gonna go grab my rice because that's next. Okay, so those tomatoes you don't want to stir in there. You just want them to be floating on the top. And then I'm gonna add a cup and a fourth of rice straight on the top again. And you just wanna make sure the rice is submerged so it cooks, but again, don't like stir the whole thing up. Just kind of push it down gently. And then I'm gonna add in my chicken thighs. So there's a pound of chicken thighs and then there was a pound of sausage and a pound of shrimp. So a very delicious jambalaya. So I'm going to take these out of here and just kind of open them up and lay them all on top. Okay, I had to clean my hands off before putting the top on here, but I'm gonna put the top on, put it on high pressure for 20 minutes and then do a 15 minute natural release. And then after that, we'll toss in the rest of the shrimp and sausage. I'm gonna squeeze in some lemon juice and then a little bit of hot sauce and then you're done. Earlier you saw that I used the two cup trays to make that chicken and rice dish. And this is actually the one cup tray. And with this hearty of a meal, I could probably be just fine with one cup. Or my husband might want two cups or we might share some. So this one cup portion felt perfect for this dish.
The last actual meal that I'm gonna make is a chicken burrito casserole, and I'm pretty sure it's Whole30 and paleo friendly, so a pretty healthy recipe. It has a few different layers to it, some chicken that's mixed with a cashew cheesy sauce, so it actually doesn't have real cheese in it. It uses cashews and nutritional yeast, which I do in a few other recipes that I like. But the good thing about that is I've heard a lot of times you can have dairy sensitivities when you are postpartum or not you have dairy sensitivities, but your baby does. So it'll be good to have a few meals that don't have any cheese or dairy in them. And then if for some reason our baby does have a dairy sensitivity, you know, I could eat this meal and reheat a different meal for Jim or Jim could eat some of the other ones with cheese while I eat something maybe more basic or something like that. But anyway, I am going to make this last meal and then we're gonna head to dessert. I'm gonna add to my skillet that already has olive oil in it, a diced jalapeno, a medium yellow onion, and then a red bell pepper. I'm also gonna add in a few cloves of garlic, about a tablespoon or so of either lemon or lime juice. I have lemon, I don't have any limes and then half a teaspoon of taco seasoning and 12 ounces of rice cauliflower. Never up, never down, never. Like a theme in a song, clever. Feeling high, feeling low. Let's make this cashew cheese sauce. So I am going to put in, let's see, a third of a cup of olive oil. And I probably could have top, popped the top of this off. I really like this dispenser, but it does go kind of slow. So I'm doing a third of a cup of olive oil and then two thirds of a cup of warm water. Now I'm doing two teaspoons of taco seasoning. I'm gonna do two teaspoons of garlic powder as well. You can do a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of onion powder, but I am all out of onion powder. So we're just gonna do two of garlic. I really like garlic, so that works out just fine. And then I'm gonna do a quarter cup of nutritional yeast. And then juice two to three lemons and add that to the blender as well. Last but not least, you need a little over a teaspoon of salt and a cup and a half of cashews and then blend it up till it's nice and creamy. This sauce was so good. I honestly would make it again and just do it with the chicken even. It was delicious. I was licking that spoon after I was done composing these meals. But to make the kind of casserole dish, I'm gonna put that cauliflower rice at the bottom, followed by a layer of salsa, then a layer of chicken on top of that, and repeat it one more time. So another layer of cauliflower rice, salsa, and then chicken on the top, and you'll end up baking it in the oven after that. Yeah. Fire burning like I do under my 
Last but not least, before I get all of this organized in the freezer downstairs, I have to make lactation cookies because I feel like how would this be a postpartum freezer prep video without some sort of lactation cookie or something like that. So that's what I'm gonna make last and then we'll go organize. I'm gonna start by putting 12 tablespoons of butter into my mixer with four tablespoons of coconut oil and then a cup and a half of sugar and beating it for about four to five minutes until it gets nice and light and fluffy. I made these lactation cookies for my sister-in-law when they just had their twin boys a few months back and tried them myself before I gave them to her and really liked them. And she also said she was addicted to them and asked for the recipe after to make them again and make another batch for herself. So these cookies are delicious. Now I think that's nice and whipped, so I'm gonna add in one whole egg, one egg yolk, and then two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And once that's combined, I can start adding my dry ingredients. And I'm gonna start with three cups of oats and a cup and a half of flour. So then for the rest of the dry ingredients, I'm going to add in five tablespoons of brewer's yeast. This is what actually makes them lactation cookies. So one, two, three, four, five. And then three tablespoons of ground flaxseed followed by the rest of the dry ingredients. So it's half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and then I'm going to top it all off by mixing in a cup and a half of chocolate chips. And that is it, and then we will get to baking. Those things for me. I don't mind complicating, but the line is crossed, I'm waiting. For a sincere apology But you can't when you're with me You need to find a way But you can't when you're with me You can with everyone else. I will say the texture of them is a little bit more on the hard side and crumbly side. They're not going to be like your typical chewy, ooey, gooey chocolate chip cookie. As you could tell with all of the ingredients I put in there, there's a lot of oats and flaxseed and things like that that make it a very hearty cookie. So hopefully it'll be filling, which is really nice if you are breastfeeding, but also a little bit of a sweet treat.
Finally time to organize the freezer. So I'm using our basement freezer, which I feel so lucky to have a second fridge and freezer downstairs. I just figured this would be the best place to separate and have mostly our freezer meals. You'll see I do have some extra meat and stuff in the freezer there as well, but beyond that, I want it to just be freezer meals. I'm going to take an inventory before baby's born of all of the foods that I have in there so I don't have to go back up and down the stairs and I can easily just tell Jim, hey, I know that there is one recipe of whatever in the freezer. Can you go grab that and thaw it out for dinner tonight? I will also make sure to link the organizers that I'm using in the description box. They're meant for the freezer and they work really well for just normal freezer organization, but they also worked incredibly well to organize all of these freezer meals. Thanks so much for joining me for today's video. I hope you enjoyed all of these meals and a little bit of organization at the end. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and until next time, I will see you guys later.